Hi guys, welcome to our flow code for peak for absolute beginner series. This is tutorial 14, pulse width modulation with peak microcontroller. Most of peak microcontroller they've got a CCP module. A CCP stands for capture, compare and pulse width modulation. This peak microcontroller has got two CCP modules, CCP1 and CCP2. The CCP2 in this peak microcontroller is the standard capture, compare and pulse width modulation, while the CCP1 is enhanced capture, compare and pulse width modulation. When this CCP peripheral is configured in capture mode, the peripheral allows timing of duration of an event, and when it's configured in compare mode, the peripheral constantly monitors a timer counter value and compare it to a value set in the application and when they match it will trigger an event and when this CCP module is configured in path width modulation the peripheral will produce a variable path width signal based on a path width and period value set in the application code. Path width modulation is a technique of controlling the amount of power delivered to an electronic load by switching on and off a digital signal. This is the simplest technique that can be used to produce analog voltages from a digital one. The fraction of the period for which the signal is switched on to the total period is known as the duty cycle. So the average DC value of the signal can be varied by varying this duty cycle. This duty cycle can be anywhere between 0 when the signal is always off to 1 when the signal is always on. Let's say our signal is 5 volt while it's on and 0 volt while it's off. Then by changing the duty cycle of the signal, the amount of the energy transferred to the load can be changed from this 0 volt to 5 volt. This method is commonly used for controlling speeds of DC motors, brightness of lamps, sine wave inventors, digital to analog converters, and so on. As you can see from this figure, when the on time is small compared to the off time, the bulb hardly gets any time to switch on. As the on time increases and the off time decreases, the bulb gets brighter. This is a simplified block diagram of a path width modulation. These are the registers that you can use. You can see it uses timer 2 for timing. In this demonstration, we are going to connect an LED to CCP2. The module will be configured to create a path width modulation signal at 1 kHz. And then we're going to load different duty cycles, a duty cycle of 100% to switch on brighter the LED, duty cycle of 80%, 50%, 30%, and 10%. And you can see how you can dim an LED. The other thing we're going to need, we're going to need to connect an oscilloscope so that we can see the path width modulation signal. Under the virtual instrument, I'm going to select the oscilloscope. This is a virtual oscilloscope. It's got four channels. You can use any channel. You're going to use the first channel, channel A. In flow code, it's easy to configure the path width modulation module of a peak microcontroller. So let us start a new flow code project, new. We're going to use the PIC 18F26K20, but any PIC with a path width modulation can be used as well. Going to use 8 MHz oscillator. It's going to be an internal oscillator. Going to disable the MCLR pin. So under the output, select the path width modulation component. We're going to add it to our 3D system panel. Here you're going to select the path width modulation channel the component is connected to. In this example, we're going to connect it to channel 2, which is on port RC1. This is a standard capture campaign path width modulation of this peak 18F26K20. 
alternative pin if this is available this allows an alternate pin to be used if available so when you select channel 2 the path with modulation pin is going to be on rc1 but if you select channel 1 it's going to be on rc2 this is a path with timer this select the timer associated with the path with modulation to drive the output you must so remember that all path with modulation channels linked to the same timer will share the same period and prescaler settings the period overflow this is gonna be 255 this value should be an unsigned integer and can be referenced with the variable name period this allows the user to change the number of count of the wall path with modulation period for 8-bit peak microcontroller the range is from 0 to 255 but with 16-bit peak microcontroller the range is from 0 to 65535 this is prescaler there are three fixed values that you can select you can select prescaler 1 4 or 6 this allows the user to change the number of program cycles per path with modulation cycle count as you can see if you change the prescaler it's going to change the period and the frequency you can see with the prescale of 1 we got a frequency of 7.8 kHz but this depend with the oscillator frequency that you are using if you select 4 the frequency is going to be 1.9 and if you select 16 it's going to be 0 0.488 in this example we're going to use the prescale of 4 to give us a frequency of 1.9 kHz representation this is just for simulation purposes you can you select analog it's going to display an analog pulse width modulation component we're going to leave it to digital in this example we're just going to load five different duty cycle we're going to load the duty cycle of 100 percent to switch on our led in full brightness then after three seconds we're going to change the duty cycle to 8%. It's going to decrease the brightness of the LED. Then we're going to decrease it to 50%. After 3 seconds, we're going to decrease it to 30%, then to 10%, and then the cycle is going to start again. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to we'll have to enable our path with modulation. Enable. This enable the path with modulation channel as an output overwriting the default output pin state. Okay. Then in our while one loop, we're gonna load our duty cycle with 100%. So this one is gonna be 100% duty cycle. The change period micro sets the overall period and prescale of the output of the path with modulation signal. The disable micro is going to disable the path with modulation channel and allows the default output or input state to be resumed. So if this pin was a normal digital input or output pin, then it's going to return to its normal state. The enable it's going to enable the path with modulation channel as an output overriding the default output pin state the set duty cycle this set the path with modulation duty cycle in terms of the on and off based of the current period setting so if you are using a 16-bit microcontroller then you can use the set duty cycle 10-bit this is going to range from 0 to 65535 okay let us use set duty cycle it's going to expect a byte value give it 255 it's going to give us the duty cycle of 100 percent then we're gonna need a three second delay after three seconds then we're gonna load a duty cycle of 80 percent which is gonna be 
eighty percent of two five five is gonna give us two o four. This is gonna be eight percent, and the duty cycle is gonna be two o four. Okay. Delay of three second again. Okay. Then we're gonna load a duty cycle of fifty percent. This is just a comment. Say duty cycle. It's gonna give us one twenty seven. Fifty percent of two five five. It's gonna give us one twenty seven point five. But we can only use unsigned integer values, so I'm gonna use 127. Then another three second delay. Then we're gonna load a 30% duty cycle. Thirty percent is gonna be seventy six. Then another delay three second and lastly we gonna load the duty cycle of ten percent. Ten percent is gonna be twenty five. Okay, let us run. You can see we've got a duty cycle of hundred percent, then eighty percent, then fifty percent, almost fifty percent, and our frequency is one point nine five kilohertz. Then it's gonna be almost thirty percent. This delay is wrong. It should be three, not thirteen percent. That's why it's taking long. Change three. Everywhere is three second. Let's run again. Run. Duty cycle eighty percent, then it's gonna be almost fifty percent, then three after three seconds it's gonna be almost thirty percent, then after three seconds it's gonna be almost ten percent, and the cycle is gonna start again. So that's all guys. This is how you can use the path width modulation of a peak microcontroller. If you wanna use a second path width modulation, then you can insert another component and select whether you're gonna use path width modulation. In this case it's gonna be CCP1. Let us compile our project and run it in Proteus simulation. We're gonna save it first. Just name it path with modulation. Save. Then compile to hex. Finish successfully. Let's run our simulation. You can see our signal on the oscilloscope. You can see the duty circle is 100%. The LED is fully on. Then after 3 seconds it's going to be 80%. The duty circle is 80%. Then after 3 seconds it's going to be 50%. It's 50 on and 50 off. And after 3 seconds it's going to be 30%. And after three seconds, then it's gonna be ten percent. So this is basically how you can change the amount of energy transferred to a device using path width modulation. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.